हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिराइव द इक्वेशन फॉर करेक्ट स्टीयरिंग नाउ इन टुडेज लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट डेविस स्टीयरिंग गियर मैकेनिज्म नाउ हियर आई हैव शोन द फ्रंट एक्सेल ऑफ द व्हीकल आर एस नाउ टू दिस फ्रंट एक्सेल देयर इज पिन जॉइंट एट आर एंड एस रिस्पेक्टिवली the two bell crank levers are attached one at r and one at s okay so these bell crank levers are pivoted at r and s let us name this bell crank lever as p r k and so q s l so k r p is a bell crank lever pivoted at point r and l s q is the bell crank lever pivoted at pin joint s of the front axle of the vehicle okay now on this bell crank lever there are two sliders so slider a on left hand bell crank lever which is connected to slider b on right hand side bell crank lever using a track arm this track arm ab is constrained to remain horizontal during all the steering conditions so i am showing a horizontal glide a guide for track arm ab so track arm ab is constrained to remain horizontal in all the positions of steering so this is a davis steering gear mechanism now for the uh, for fundamental equation of correct steering we have seen that cot of phi minus cot of theta equals to w by l where theta <coughs> is the angle turn by inner wheel and phi is the angle turn by outer wheel whereas w is the width of the vehicle frame and l is the wheel base or the distance between front axle and rear axle now we will find out the geometrical condition for davis steering gear mechanism such that the mechanism satisfies fundamental equation of correct steering so for that i will draw the mechanism again okay so this is track arm ab which is pivoted at points r and s of the front axle okay this is point a and this is point b of the track arm which is constrained to remain horizontal for all the steering conditions now while the vehicle is moving along a straight line path let us suppose that inclination of this bell crank levers with the front axle is alpha while the vehicle is moving along a straight line path let us name the angle of inclination of bell crank levers with the front axle as alpha now let us suppose that the vehicle takes a right turn now when the vehicle takes a right turn let us consider that the track arm moves to the right by an amount of x in horizontal direction so point b will go to here by an amount of x and a will go to here by an amount of x okay this is the displaced position of a and b respectively because the link ab is constrained to move horizontal so point a will move along horizontal distance x to the right while taking a right turn and point b will also move towards right by distance of x now let us suppose that point a initially was at a distance of y from the vertical passing through r 
as well as point B was at a distance of Y from the vertical passing through point S. Also, we will consider that now while taking right turn, this is the inner side. We'll suppose that the wheel, inner wheel has turned through an angle of theta degrees and outer wheel has turned through an angle of 5 degrees from the original position, from its mean position. Okay. Now for condition of correct steering, we need to find out cot of phi minus cot of theta and equate it to W by L to get the geometrical condition for Davis steering gear mechanism. Now let us consider the left side of the front axle geometry on the left side. So from here, I will get tan of uh, first of all, let us say that the vertical distance of this track arm from the front axle is H. So from this triangle, we get tan of alpha is equals to. So this triangle executed by angle alpha, this triangle. So we get tan of alpha equals to Y divided by H. So tan of alpha equals to Y divided by H. That is called this as equation number one. Now from this full triangle included by alpha plus phi, we get tan of alpha plus phi is equals to tan of alpha plus phi equals to opposite side is x plus y and adjacent side is h so tan of alpha plus phi is equals to x plus y upon h so this is my equation number two from the left hand side of this front axle now i will expand this left hand side of equation number two tan of alpha plus phi equals to so tan of a plus b equals to what we get tan of alpha plus tan of phi upon 1 minus tan of alpha tan of phi this is equals to x plus y upon h now in this equation let us substitute the value of tan of alpha which is y upon h now so uh, we will substitute y by h for tan of alpha so y by h plus tan of phi divided by 1 minus y by h tan of phi is equals to x plus y upon h. Okay, after substituting tan of alpha equals to y by h from equation number 1. So let us solve this. So y plus h tan of phi divided by h minus y tan of phi is equals to x plus y upon h. Okay. Now we will solve this equation in detail okay. to get the value of cot of phi. So <coughs> we will take a new page. So the equation becomes now h into y plus h tan of phi is equals to x plus y into h minus y tan of phi okay after expanding so h into y plus h square into tan of phi is equals to x into h minus x y tan of phi plus y into h minus y square tan of phi okay now I will take tan of phi to one side. Let us take tan of phi to left hand side. So h square tan of phi plus xy tan of phi. This will come to this side. Plus y square tan of phi is equals to. So what remains to the right hand side is yh 
plus xh and this will come to the right and will become minus yh so this this gets cancelled so tan of y into the bracket h square plus xy plus y square is equals to xh that is tan of phi equals to xh upon y square plus xy plus h square what we want we want cot of phi so cot of phi is inverse of tan of phi so we get cot of phi is equals to y square plus xy plus h square upon xh see this is equation number a which is obtained from the left hand side of the front axle from this we have got the this equation for cot of phi similarly we can solve for right hand side geometry and by doing so we get the equation for cot of theta which is equals to y square minus xy plus h square divided by xh that will be our equation number b okay by solving the left hand side geometry of the front axle okay, this one by solving this geometry we get the equation for cot of phi by solving this geometry in the similar manner we will get cot of theta equals to y square minus xy plus h square upon xh now what we want we want cot of phi minus cot of theta equals to w by l cot of angle turn by outer wheel minus cot of angle turn by inner wheel that should be equals to w by l so let us do that so cot of phi minus cot of theta is equals to y square plus xy plus plus h square divided by xh minus y square minus xy plus h square divided by x square this should be equals to w by l now we will solve this okay now let us solve this so we'll subtract this from this so xh in the denominator and in the numerator we get y square plus xy plus h square minus y square plus xy minus h square equals to w upon l so y square gets cancelled with y square h square gets cancelled with h square so we get twice xy upon xh equals to w by l so x gets cancelled with x we get final equation as y by h equals to w upon twice l and we know that y by h is tan of alpha so here from equation number one we have tan of alpha equals to y upon h so tan of alpha is equals to w upon twice l this equation is used to determine the initial inclination alpha of the bell crank lever with the front axle while designing Davis steering gear mechanism in order to satisfy the fundamental equation of correct steering so for Davis we get tan of alpha equals to w upon twice l with w is the width of the vehicle frame and l is the wheel base so this is the equation used for Davis steering gear mechanism in order to determine alpha in the initial stages of design such that the condition of correct steering is satisfied now Davis steering gear mechanism satisfy the fundamental equation of correct steering at all the positions of steering still it is not used because of the presence of sliding pairs because of the presence of sliding pairs Davis is it experiences more amount of wear and tear due to friction between sliding pairs in the next lecture we will uh, discuss about Ackerman steering gear mechanism thank you